This is my 2021 desk setup tour. This is a follow up to my YouTube studio tour, which I released at the end of last year. If you haven't seen that, I will link it in the card above and in the description below. The desk I'm using is from IKEA and is actually a dining table. It's a Norraker, I think that's how you pronounce it, and it's from their cafe furniture range. That means it's actually designed for commercial use. So it's built to take a beating. I really wanted something that would be nice and sturdy as I knew I was planning on attaching a bunch of mounts to it. And I can tell you this thing is solid. It's made from solid birch wood and it's not going anywhere. This is the 2021 M1 iMac. This is the eight core version with eight gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD storage. I decided to go for the silver version. This is a change to my setup. Up until about a month ago, I had been using the 2016 MacBook Pro base model. This is now almost impossible to use as it suffers from a swollen battery, which means it has to be continually plugged into power, cutting the available ports down from two to just one. It also suffers from a temperamental keyboard and trackpad, as well as the occasional fatal error shutdown. This configuration of the 2021 iMac has four USB-C ports and a separate power supply. So in comparison to the MacBook Pro, I really am spoiled for choice. So far, I have been pretty impressed with the performance of the M1 iMac and I have some thoughts. So let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see a full review. Nothing amazing here. I have a surge protector extension, which sits on this cable organizer from Ikea and I have the cables organized with these Velcro straps. I'm using the Apple Magic Keyboard with Touch ID that came with my iMac and I must say I'm really enjoying logging into websites and the Mac itself at the touch of a button. That is hands down the best reason to stick to the Apple Keyboard. That and the fact that I actually like using it. I'm not a keyboard snob and this is a huge improvement over the keyboard I have been using for the last four and a half years on the MacBook Pro. For my mouse, I am one of those strange people who actually likes using the Apple Magic Mouse. I've been using one since the release of the original back in 2009. In fact, up until I bought the M1 iMac, I still was. That's more than a decade of use from the same mouse. Now I have the Magic Mouse 2. Yes, the one with the badly placed charging port. But honestly, I'm not sure how big of a problem this really is. In the month that I've been using it, I've had to charge it only once, and that's when I first opened it. Currently, it has 58% battery remaining, which means at my usage, I'm only gonna have to charge it every two months, or six times a year. So I don't think I'm gonna lose too much sleep over it, and I've always got the old one to fall back on. In addition to that, I also have the Apple Magic trackpad. I use this mostly for gestures and scrolling through my Final Cut timeline. Everything sits on top of this large cork desk pad, also from IKEA. It's called a Susig, I believe. Although my iMac has twice the storage of my MacBook Pro, you always need a little bit more, especially when it comes to video. I'm using the Samsung T7 with fingerprint reader, although I don't use the fingerprint reader, as you can see here, it's actually taped over because I find the light quite distracting. I only got this version because it was on sale and cheaper than the standard version. But who knows, maybe one day I will feel the need to unlock it using my fingerprint. This is the one terabyte version. On top of that, I have a uni USB hub and card reader. It features two USB-A, one USB-C, a full size HDMI, micro SD and regular SD card slots. The cable it comes with is USB-C on both ends and is capable of power delivery. So if you are using it with your MacBook Pro, you can plug in your power adapter directly into the hub and it will act as a pass through. The SSD and the USB hub 
take up two Thunderbolt ports on the iMac, leaving two regular USB-C ports. The first one has the braided USB-C to lightning cable plugged into it. This is the one that comes with the iMac and I use this to charge the keyboard, mouse and trackpad as well as my phone and my AirPods. The last port is taken up by the Apple USB-C to USB-A dongle, you know, because you can never have too many dongles. I have a 10 watt wireless charger from Ikea in black with a cork base to match the desk mat. At 10 watts, I know it's not very fast, but I only use it occasionally as a top up, so it's fine. On top of that usually sits my AirPods, which don't actually have the wireless charging case but that's still where they live. Next to that is a three port USB-A charging hub, again from Ikea with various cables, which get switched in and out depending on what I'm testing. For getting all of my overhead shots, whether that be unboxing or product B-roll, I use the Elgato multi-mount with flex arm kit. It's attached to the side of my desk. This thing is super versatile. It comes with a bunch of different length arms each with a ball joint so you can position it just how you want it. Mine is the large version and since I got mine they've added a smaller one to the lineup. Large or small just determines the maximum height of the main pole. I think the small one only has one height adjuster whereas this one has two. Attached to the end of the multi-mount is a Joby SLR zoom head. I did have the Falcam F38 on here, which I reviewed a couple of months ago. If you haven't seen that video, I will leave it linked in the card above and the description below. I would still recommend the F38, but I found I was short a few base plates. So I switched back to the Joby for now. For lighting, I'm using the Elgato key light. This also comes with the same multi-mount as I'm using for the overhead rig, which means I'm able to mix and match the pieces. The key light is an edge lit diffused LED panel. It gives a really nice, even soft light, even at close distance. It's designed for streamers, so it can be clamped to the backside of your desk against the wall. If you haven't got a lot of space like me, then something like the Aperture 120D just isn't practical whereas this takes up barely any room. The light is Wi-Fi controlled by either your phone or your computer using Elgato Control Center. It's a bi-color light that gets pretty insanely bright. I very rarely use it at more than 20%. For my microphone, I'm using the Rode NT USB Mini. There's a full review of this mic on the channel, so if you haven't seen that, then check out the links above and below. It's also the mic I'm using right now via the Rode Connect app. So if you like what you hear, then go and check it out. I have it mounted to the Murfac TU1 Professional Arm. Again, I reviewed this a few weeks ago, so if you wanna check out that review, links are everywhere. Obviously, I already had the arm, which works fine, so I have no plans to upgrade it. The main camera I am using is the Panasonic Lumix GH5 with the 12 to 60 f 3.5 to 5.6 kit lens. This is a slight change to my previous setup as I wanted to be able to get the camera a little bit closer to me so I could reach the buttons. This is something that I was unable to do with the previous lens I was using, which was the 25mm f1.7 prime. The main drawback of the swap is that I now don't get the same depth of field, so I may end up changing back. If you have any suggestions for an affordable, fast, wide angle lens for micro four thirds, then please let me know in the comments down below. I have this mounted to the desk using the Elgato solid arm. This can also share components with the other two mounts, so everything is nice and interchangeable. The camera is attached to the arm with another Joby SLR zoom tripod head. This makes it super easy to switch between the main angle and the overhead rig. The B cam is a Panasonic Lumix G80 or G85 in some countries. This now has the 25mm f1.7. The camera is mounted on a Rove Pro everyday 8 inch slider with another Joby SLR zoom head. I picked up the Rove slider secondhand on eBay a few months back and I've really been enjoying using it. It's super simple to use, it doesn't take up much space and the battery lasts forever. And that's pretty much it. If you've made it to the end of the video, then let me know using the eyes emoji in the comments below and I will show you some love. I will leave links in the description to all of the items if you wanna pick any of them up. 
they are affiliate links so i will earn a small commission on anything you buy at no extra cost to you and it really helps out the channel if you like this video then give it a thumbs up you can now buy me a coffee if you so wish using the link below or not it's up to you it's your life and as always you can subscribe for more content like this thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next one